Hey everybody, welcome to this short tutorial on how I walk through a um, preparing a lesson. This will include synchronizing video and audio. It'll include color key or chroma key, uh, image mask, layering in graphics, placing some text, and possibly resizing the main video, and possibly also adding some background music. So here we go, I'll try to make this as quick as possible. Over here in my assets window, I've got a lot of videos, uh, six videos actually, and six audio that I recorded separately. So I'm gonna grab this video one, and I'm gonna grab the audio that matches it. I'm gonna go up to uh, clip and synchronize clips. And what's that, what that's gonna do is use the audio to, um, and let's call this bongo one, lesson, lesson clip. What that's gonna do is use the audio from both clips to create a new clip right here, hopefully with synchronized audio. So if I click on this, nothing will happen. Let's drag it into the timeline. And then I wanna look, oh, I know, cause I didn't have audio selected. So over here, now look at the audio of this clip. I've got two audio sources now and they're synchronized automatically. One is called Storyline. That's the one that's connected to the video. That's the audio on the video. And then I've got Connected Audio, which is from my Zoom unit. It actually says Zoom right here. That's from the Zoom. So if I listen to it now, it's gonna be loud. Right now, and you'll notice that they're pretty high. And I've got both. So I'm just gonna turn the video audio off, if that makes sense. The recorded audio that went into my camera I don't want that. I want my nice microphone shotgun audio. So now if I listen to the same thing. It sounds so. These are the bongos the way I have them tuned up. Uh, and you'll notice my record levels are pretty low. I'll play a little bit more. Just look at my talking. I recorded the talking low because the bongo levels are much higher. So look at look at my initial recording level. Up right now and you'll notice that they're pretty high, pretty highly tuned. Um, you have a small drum in it. So I'm down. I'm down even below 30, but that's okay because this audio is super clean. So one of the first things I'm gonna do, and I can do more later, but I like to use this feature in Final Cut Pro X called Audio Enhancements. And what I do is I click the loudness, and then I set the amount to about 25, and I can set the uniformity to about 40. And what that's gonna do is increase, of course, the loudness. It's also gonna balance out the uniformity between my talking and the bongos themselves. So let me see if I can increase, there we go, because we're only working with one or two clips down here. Um, so that's gonna make it a little bit easier for you guys to see what's happening with the audio. They're pretty high, pretty highly tuned. Um, you have a small drum and a big drum. So look at my, my voice already is about 10 dB louder. Rhythms as well. But even in the free section, uh, I want to get you guys going with a great sound. So these are the bongos the way I have them tuned. And you notice the bongos were hitting about minus 3 dB. So I don't want to push this any farther right now. I will revisit this a little bit later. For right now, I want to focus on the video and cleaning up this stuff. Obviously, I'm going to need a mask. Um, before I do that, I'm going to apply a color grading tool called Color Finale. So I'll show you how that works quickly. And this is not a tutorial on how to use Color Finale, but I want to show you some basic principles. Uh, this one has, and I'm not even sure what Lift is. Well, let's see what it does. Uh, lift. Okay, so lift just raises, it looks like it just uniformly raises the entire um, exposure. Gamma is sort of a light sensitive. See, it sort of raises the light appearance. Um, if you go too bright, of course, you end up blowing out. See all this area down here that's just pure white, and obviously this is way too bright. But if you have a dark shot, you can uh, raise the gamma. I don't really need to do that maybe a tiny bit. And then the gain makes things more intense, right? So gain is saturation all the way down, all the way up. And if I wanted to, I could move this center 
and have more blue, have more yellow, have more, uh, whoa, <laughs> a little bit goes a long way. All right, but the point is I can I could drag this guy around and change the gain in the spectrum. I'm just gonna reset that. I think all I wanna do is push the gamma up a little bit, brighten this up. Then we're gonna add another thing. These are curves. And this is very common. I'm gonna put a little S curve in here. So I'm, I'm gonna push the brights up a little, just a little, because my this bongo head right here is almost completely blown out already. It's almost white. But I'm gonna pull down the shadows a little, give it a little more, see if I do that extreme. But you wanna just do this a little bit, give it a little S curve. And that's going to increase the contrast a little bit. And there's more goodies in here. Here's another one I can, let's say, if I want to get rid of a little bit of the yellow, I can pull this down. If you look at my skin tone. It goes from kind of more yellow to more, maybe a little more natural if I just pull the yellow down. Anyway, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I just wanted to show you what I might do quickly. Then I'm going to need a mask. So let's grab the draw mask tool. For the mask, it's, oh, sorry, come on. It's easier to use if you make the picture smaller. So I need to follow these directions. Add a control point. I'm just gonna click over here and I'm gonna add points all around the outside of this video and voila. So that's the mask. I'm trimming that off, then I'm going to grab my keying, uh, but I have a keyer that I already edited and I put it in my basics folder. It's called super key. I'm gonna drop that on and now my video is clean, completely cut out. All right. Now, if I want to, at this point, I can also change the scale. So I might just zoom in a tiny bit and maybe I want to drag this over so it's a, I have a little more space on the side. You can do whatever you want. Um, that's one option. And that's it. So looking at the before and after, I've got now three effects in here. The color. There's a difference between before and after. Before, after. Uh, the draw mask, of course. I'm trimming all that stuff I don't want in my picture, and then the keyer. So together, before we had this, right now we have this. Now, of course, now that I've got the background keyed out, I'm gonna zoom in on my whole video, I wanna throw in a background. So I'm gonna go to my favorite pinstripes background, and I'm going to stretch this out in the background. Now I've got a nice background that I like. I'm going to put a logo. I've got my World Drum Club logo, which is a graphic. I'm gonna drag that behind my video, of course, but in on top of the background. And this is a Photoshop file. You can use a PNG file or um, you could use a GIF, I guess. I like to use the PNGs because they're clean. The Photoshop file also very clean and high quality. Now I can highlight it down there and I can select it in here. I can change the scale. I can change the opacity or opacity. So I'm gonna do that as well. I like to put the logo kind of like that. That tells everybody it's a World Drum Club video. I could make it huge. I could even put it behind me. So doing something fun with the logo. Uh, down here is the opa opacity or opacity. I like to say opacity. You say opacity, I say opacity. I'm going to put that at about 70%. And it gives it, you know, a little translucency, transparency, which ties it in with the background more. All right, so this is my look. And now I've got three assets in the timeline. My main video, which has three filters applied to it. My logo and the background. So let's refocus on audio. My next step is I wanna get my audio ready 
for uh, for export, which means I'm going into more of a mastering stage right now. But let's look at let's look at where the audio is. See those too well right now, but they're down there. And you're going to go around, tune them with a wrench. Don't use... Okay, so obviously this is very low. This is peaking around minus 12. I need to get this up, preferably slamming zero. Uh, you don't have to always have your audio slamming zero, but, you know, why not? It makes your videos really present. Um, I use a plug-in called Track Plug. It's by WaveArts, and I can drop this on. It's basically a compressor, but it also has some other features like compression with... It has a noise gate... Um, I use, there's presets in here, and I just go quickly to a preset called Mail Voice, Voice Over Mail. And here's what that does to the track. 13 millimeter or half inch. And go around the drum, even amount on every lug nut until you reach your desired pitch. Yeah. All right. Okay, it makes everything like, I'm just going to turn off this noise gate because it, the noise gates are okay if there's noise. There's really no noise on uh, the track, so I don't really need the noise gate. I'm just going to use the compressor, basically. And I'm going to leave that. Then, you see these levels in here? There's some... I pro it's probably over zero. Yeah. Okay, so this is this has compressed and raised all the volume, including the peaks. Now I'm, I'm hitting plus eight. Totally unacceptable. So we need a limiter. So I'm going to use this limiter called Final Plug. Final Plug is a what they call a brick wall limiter. It's going to it's going to not allow anything uh, over zero. So I, there's a bunch of presets on here. Sometimes I use CD mastering, DVD mastering. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's just mastering, and it should it should not allow anything over zero. It's just kind of a sound. It is It is kind of a sound. And look over here. I'm just hitting zero. Nothing is going over zero. You don't have to tune your bongos to an exact note. Just have them be a little bit different. So what I would recommend you do is listen to a lot of bongos. All right. So let's, look in, let's listen to that difference. This is two plugins. I put a track plug, and then I put a final plug. So the track plug was to raise the volume of my voice, you know, get everything kind of even, that's a compressor, and then I have a final compressor, which is set up as a limiter. So here's the before, and actually, to get the real before, I have to also turn off my loudness audio enhancements, because I did a little of that. So here's where we started. Play with one finger, primarily, kind of my index finger. A lot of players play with the, the tip of the three. All right, and get ready. Here's where we ended up with the audio of the fingers the tip area of the fingers and you can play I like to play with one finger primarily kind of my index finger all right so now I want to add well what I'm gonna do is something that I do often which is I'm gonna select all these three things and turn them into one thing and so what I'm gonna do is select them all and then I go to new compound clip and that turns three clips now into one clip. Now this, this will behave as a single clip. I can apply color correction. I can apply audio filters, video filters to this one clip. I can also double click on it if I want, go back in and edit things individually. But for finishing this video up, I, I wanna just treat this as one thing. Then I wanna go in because I believe. The rest of you becoming members, Go meet me at uh, patreon.com. Yeah, so I put in a little... I don't, I don't know if you guys heard the dog barking, but we're going to deal with that too. Uh, I want to put in a little graphic, some text here. So I drag my text in. I'm going to type in the little window up here. The address. It always wants to correct Patreon to patron. So I type in my URL that I'm hoping people will visit and support me. Let's put this over here. I can add drop shadow, whatever I want to do, just make it simple. Maybe I'll increase the size a little bit. All right, um, there we go. There's my text. 
uh, just grab the end of it and slide that down. Now I can do my transition. Now that, now that I have the end of the video here, I can apply a transition, which is the cross dissolve. I'm just gonna throw that on there and that will fade out the end. Thanks for watching. With the nice dog. So I had some dogs next door. We just got some new neighbors and they have dogs that love to bark. And so what I'm gonna do is grab some audio over here. This is just pre, you know, pre existing audio that comes in the program. I'm gonna lower it to about minus 20 dB, minus 18, minus 20 is a good place I found, at least a good starting place for background music when you're talking over it. And let's figure out where I want this to come in. Okay, so for you drum club members, and if you're not a member, go to patreon.com slash Kalani. Oh, I should probably put this over here. Okay, but this, this isn't for real, you guys. This is the sample. Uh, I can trim this off. And, and then I'm going to just add a little bit of fade out right there. And let's see how this sounds. See if the volume's okay. Okay, so for you drum club members, and if you're not a member, go to patreon.com slash Kalani and join World Drum Club. For you guys, I'm gonna break that down for you, show you how to play a few different bongo patterns and more. All right, thanks for watching this introduction. All right, that sounds good. I'm just gonna make sure that text lasts all the way over there. Um, go to my beginning. See, this is me fiddling around at the beginning of the video. I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm just talking to myself. So what I do is just leave a, leave a breath before I start talking. There we go. Looks like I'm taking a breath. Um, just need a second. You know, most transitions are one second long. I'm going to put a cross dissolve at the beginning. And I like to just use my talking and as a guide and move this transition right up to where I start talking. And let's see what that looks like. Hey guys, it's time to talk bongos. I hope you're as excited as I am. And that's basically it. And then um, I can export this and I have a few options. Uh, my fit, this is my finished video ready for export. Look at the audio. It's really full on. It's got so much more present. The video looks good. And I can just go up to export or share. That's what it says on mine. I can create a master file, which will put a file on my computer. Lately, I've been going straight to YouTube and there's export settings on here. Uh, you can fill out, you know, select your resolution and select whether it's public or private, right? Go directly to YouTube. Um, or you can go to your computer. And if I do that, it says share and then a master file. And then I can pick a few settings as well. How do I want to export it? Depending on what I'm doing, um, I'll, you know, select different ones. But most of these videos go straight to YouTube, uh, for this channel anyway. And so I would just use that. It's easy and it doesn't clutter up my computer with tons of master files. However, if I was going to make a DVD or I wanted to compress these videos into multiple formats for sharing in different formats, then I would put the file on my computer. I would export a master file. And then anytime I needed to, I could go back and I could use something like Handbrake to compress those master files into various sizes and various um, formats. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Just to review, we took uh, video and audio. We layered the, we synchronized the audio and the video. We applied a few filters, the color correction, mask and keyer. I shot over a green screen. I applied the logo. I applied the background. I also applied a few audio filters, a compression for the track, and then a final plug that's a limiter to make sure I wasn't going over zero. And then I created a compound clip from those three clips, which acts as one clip. Then I added my text and music. Now, could have I, could have I added text and music over here? Yes, absolutely. I could add text and music inside here, but I just elected not to this time. Uh, and then I put a couple transitions on the beginning and ending just to finish it up. And that's it. All right. Thanks for watching, you guys. I'll see you in a future video.